take two. What's going on, ladies and babies? Uh, today we're checking out the Earthquaker Devices Bit Commander version 2, and we're going to see what kind of analog, uh, glitchy, fuzzy, crazy goodness lies within this pedal, and why I think it's one of... It's a pedal that you have to at least try, if not own, in your lifetime. I think everyone should try it. So if you don't know about Earthquaker Devices, you really should. They make a bunch of wonderful and weird pedals, all the way from things like the Plumes, which is pretty much like a tube screamer with some different voicings, all the way to things like this and things like the Rainbow Machine, uh, recreations of old fuzzes like the Park Fuzz, uh, which is like a Mark III tone bender, uh, things like that that are kind of cool. The, uh, the Bit Commander was released, uh, the version 1 was released somewhere in the early 2010s. I can't remember exactly. Uh, but the version 2 added uh, soft touch switching, So soft. So no kachunka kachunka. It's got relay true bypass inside. And we'll open it up and we'll we'll give you a look inside of the pedal. And we won't break it like we did the Supreme. <laughs> and uh, it's got top mounted jacks as well as top mounted uh, power jacks. So that's all well and cool. Uh, really easy to mount on your pedal board. It's a standard kind of pedal sized enclosure. Here's a boss uh, compact sized pedal. For comparison, you can see that uh, the Big Commander is you know, pretty much the same size. Uh, the screw for the battery door on the boss makes it a little bit longer, but then if you take into account the jacks on the Bit Commander, it's about equal. So they're about the same width, and this one has top-mounted jacks, so winner. There's a very bright uh, white LED on the front that will uh, let you know that the pedal is on. Let me get a power supply, and then I can show it to you. So it's got a nice uh, white LED here, very clear, um, and again, it's soft touch switching. It's great. It's I love it that you have such a soft touch switching, and then this pedal sounds like a can of like angry robots, and that's pretty sick. So basically, the Earthquaker Devices Bit Commander is four pedals in one. You basically have two like square wave synthesizer, square wave synthesizer oscillator outputs that track analog so it's pretty mono it's there's definitely monophonic very glitchy when you try to feed it chords and you have sub and down uh, so you can just basically bring in the levels of those that's all you get control for and then you also have two distortion circuits one that's like an octavia fuzz type one that's like an octavia fuzz like octave up um, and that's here and then you also have the bass signal and it's not just the dry signal it's a distorted dry signal so it's kind of some type of fuzzy transistory sounding overdrive it could be diode clipping but it sounds kind of more transistory or maybe op amp drive and and there's two global controls which are the uh, output level here and then the uh 
the filter control, and the filter control just controls a low-pass filter like you'd see on most uh, subtractive synthesizers that basically just rolls off, it shelves the, the high frequencies so you can make it sound a little bit smoother or a little bit more kind of angry, synthy kind of a sound. Uh, yeah, like I said, top-mounted jacks. Uh, we got a 9-volt power jack, uh, center negative. It does not take a battery if I can remember yesterday when I opened up the pedal, but we can... Let's take a look inside, shall we, and and see what's in there, and uh, we'll see what's kind of going on inside the pedal. But yeah, I mean, the operation's pretty simple. You know, you basically just have a master level and master low-pass filter, and then you have two, uh, sorry, four mix controls of the different voices, and you can kind of blend them as you choose and then adjust the master level and master kind of uh, uh, treble response. I think that... Uh, now, some people don't really know what to do with this pedal. They're kind of like, oh, I don't... I don't know what to do with that. If you're just, you know, going to play a lot of clean chords, that's not really what this is for. It can't really do a lot of chords. Maybe on the bass sound, you can use it for kind of an overdrive. Yeah, there's no room for a battery inside. So this is the inside of the pedal. Um, a couple things to note, right? We have this large orange relay for the relay bypass circuit. We have, you will see a few ICs. I think this IC is used for the switching. And then there's uh, a couple other ICs, um, like this... 386D JRC G133B. I have no idea what that is, but there's very nice. I do. I don't know a ton about electronics, but I'm learning more as I'm starting to build my own pedals, and um, I'm seeing a lot of Nishicon capacitors in here. Yeah, they're all Nishicon capacitors. The electrolytics, uh, the electrolytic capacitors. I don't know if you can see that much, um, like those gold ones and the black ones too which are pretty nice and more expensive than other capacitors that they could be getting, like the Illinois capacitor uh, that are in the Fender amps all the time that suck. There is one discrete transistor in here. I don't know what that's used for, probably for the bass signal. It's right by the bass knob, so I'm going to assume it's part of the bass drive circuit. There is a giant transformer in here, though, and this uh, I have, I would believe has something to do with the up circuit as it is on the side in the same area as the up knob, right? And uh, the transformer is interesting because the uh, Octavia fuzz pedal used a transformer, and I think that that's pretty cool. I'm going to hide the serial number here, but um, it's pretty cool. They, like, wrote the date, um, and then they made the octopus or, like, the... Um, the octopus guy like playing ping pong. Someone drew that in Sharpie, which is pretty cool. So whoever checked it off or finished building it. Uh, and uh, it's also cool to see that there's not really any SMT components, at least, or SMD components on the top side. There is <laughs> one big solder blob on one of those pot solder joints uh, right by the transformer. Um, but I, you know, it's probably pretty hard to solder right next to that transformer. So I'll give him uh, credit there. Or I'll give him a pass on that. But I don't see any SMD components aside from two of the ICs. So this IC right here and then the other IC way up there. Those are surface mount components. But everything else, oh, oh and the third IC on over here. I forgot about that one. Um, those are surface mount. But everything else is larger through hole components, meaning that they're pretty easy to replace uh, should you need to replace them. But uh, we have tight tolerance metal film capacitors that are uh, the 1% the tolerance because they're blue. Um, and then we have, uh, uh, you know, film caps and electrolytics and then the, the nice relay. And then that, you know, nice SG, SGI switch or SCI. Anyway, guts, guts are cool of the pedals, but maybe you don't care about that. So let's go to the sound samples and uh, you'll get to hear it uh, not just in a mix, but by itself. Let's take a listen.
welcome. Hopefully your ears uh, can recover after the sonic annihilation that is the Bit Commander version 2. Now, let's give this pedal some scores, shall we? Overall, I'd give this pedal a 9.5 out of 10. There's really not more I could ask for to fit in this small of an enclosure. There are some things that I would do if I were Earthquaker devices. For instance, like a version 3 would maybe... I would, I would kind of split this into two pedals, really. Um, I, mi I might split this into two pedals. One that has... It's just all like analog oscillators, like from a synthesizer on the up and the bass control. And so it's just all kind of glitchy, bleep bloop kind of noises. Uh, that would be pretty cool if they did that. Two, I would, I don't know, I would maybe find a way to do the octave down and then run it through a distortion circuit and then give you like a gain control over the distortion amount. That would be kind of cool if you could have like a, a gain control and instead of a sub octave, you just had an octave down, some other way of doing the octave down that's less like kind of synthy and more kind of guitar sounding. Um, and then like ran the bass and the down through the same drive circuit and gave you a control over that drive. But then that pot was dual ganged and it let you control the amount of fuzz on the octave up. That would be kind of cool too. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. This pedal is pretty much perfect as it is. And that's why they haven't updated it. It's got soft touch bypass, a really bright LED, top mounted jacks. Um, it takes nine volt power, center negative. It's It fits on your board. It's got six robust knobs. I don't know what else there is to fix about it. Like you could want certain things to expand, but it would only change the number of options. I did try to remove the PCB from the back last night, from the pedal last night, and it didn't really want to move. Um, you know, the way that they soldered, you know, they solder in the pots and the LED and the switch last. So that kind of locks the board into place. So, yeah, I don't know how easy it would be to repair. It might be a little bit more difficult in terms of repairability. But again, yeah, man, overall, this thing just rules. It's so much fun. It's such a great studio tool. You got to try it on, like, bass. It would be great to do a dub on vocals. You could plug it, you know, use it as an insert or something and run your vocals through it or drums or something crazy. It's super fun to like get some synth based sounds with this. So I need to I need to let my friend Jaden try this thing out and really let him rip on it. I think he could he would get a lot out of it. I like the way that they just stuck with the mix controls and gave you a set amount of distortion on the two uh, circuits that have the distortion. I think that that's a really genius idea. Uh, so yeah, in terms of flexibility, I think I give it 10 out of 10. I mean, it's so flexible, just the ability to dial in, you know, limitless, there's limitless possibilities in this pedal, especially once you start thinking about the filter and start thinking about the different circuits that you can blend in and blend out and, you know, have different, more of this and less of that. And, um, you know, what kind of guitar are you sending in? Uh, so yeah, it's pretty great. In terms of pedal board ability, I think I give this 10 out of 10. Uh, it's pretty darn great. It would be nice to have the option for a battery, but I am kind of of the belief that we should let batteries die. We should not put battery options in pedals anymore. As aside from tuners, tuning pedals and pedals for acoustic guitar, that's a different story because you're not going to build, you're not going to put like a, 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 a a Chuck's power supply, a $300 Chuck's power supply underneath your Pedal Train Nano just to power your TU3 and then, you know, some type of active DI. It's like, no, I'm not doing that for acoustic guitar. Nine volt batteries are so expensive that I could spend, you know, I could buy a one spot or I could buy three nine volt batteries, right? And the nine volt batteries will die. And for most of us, you know, it's not worth it to gamble with the batteries. I just, from a reliability standpoint, no way. I'm never, I'm never doing nine volts aside from my acoustic tuner. Aside from my tuner, I use for my acoustic. That's the only thing, the only pedal I'll use with batteries uh, anymore. In terms of durability, the pots seem to be well constructed and they're, they're nice enough. The foot switch is, because it's relay bypass, it doesn't affect the audio if it gets stuff in it, and it doesn't get stuff in it, really. And um, also, the, uh, the LED, everything on this pedal has worked faithfully. I've never had issues of the pots getting stuff in them. The jacks have worked flawlessly. This pedal has literally worked flawlessly. I've never had any issues with it. It's been wonderful. So, yeah, I think in terms of tonal, we talked about tonal versatility, tonal quality. It's a weird sounding pedal. 
but it's it's a fun sounding pedal and i think the sounds that you get out of it are pretty fun i'd say i'd say nine out of ten I, again i i don't i haven't played a real octavia so i couldn't tell you how it relates to that but it's not trying to be a clone of the octavia either so I think some people will find this pedal 9 out of 10 is great, fuzzy, weird stuff. And other people will be like, ew, 0 out of 10. Ugh, I hate that thing. Sounds awful. Uh, yeah, some people are not going to like this pedal. And that's okay. I think that's all I have to say about the Bit Commander. Stay fuzzy, folks. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.